Hi everyone, it's Kate and this is day 18 of my pastel marathon and this one is a little sketch on Canson Mitons. It's the flannel gray color that I'm using and this is the back of the paper so it's not very um, textured and this is a small sketch of a sunset and a boat. I found this picture on Pinterest, uh, no sorry not Pinterest, Pixabay. <laughs> because I was looking also on Pinterest for some apple blossoms. I'm going kind of through a period of apple blossoms. And um, in this tutorial, basically, we are creating the sky and the water, which is not blue. So if you think about the sky, you think blue. But in this case, I really like the pinks and the yellows in the sky and also the violets that are mostly in the water. So um, for the uh, real-time video, it doesn't have a voiceover, but it was for a fact because we have some works happening in the house, like on the roof. And as we are almost at the last floor, there's a lot of noise. So I managed to actually record this audio, um, but the voiceover, it will just be too much noise. So I'm sorry for that. But in the future videos, I will definitely do the voiceover as usual. So anyway, but this one uh, in full, you can find it on Patreon, uh, the full version of this video, the slow real-time version. And as I was saying, I'm blending the sky and I had a question um, yesterday about which items to blend and which to leave textured. So I just wanted to answer that one quickly also because in this, um, you can also clearly see the difference between the sky, which is fairly blended, so it's quite smooth, and between the clouds and water. So the most textured things in my drawing here are the clouds and the water. Why I chose the clouds and the water to have texture. So the boat is also blended, but and also that um, kind of rocky thing in the back, it has some texture to it too, but I blended it slightly down with the finger then. I chose to have texture in the clouds because it just portrays clouds better. It just gives the sense of clouds, of them being actually um, not solid, but of having kind of transparency to them. So usually when I draw clouds, I always leave the uh, texture. And the water texture helps to show the ripples on the water. So that is another thing where I use the texture. and. If you are drawing something that is very smooth, um, I answered also that comment, but just wanted to um, say here as well, if you're drawing something that is very smooth, you can also use texture in those cases. So it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth as you see it. So use your artistic license and even um, smooth metals. So depending, if you have, for example, a jug with flowers, then I would do the jug smooth and the flower is more textured. So the thing that is different, um, the thing that kind of has more texture in it usually catches our attention and you can use it to your advantage in a way that you can attract the attention of the viewer to the things that you are um, wishing to show them. So, but mostly it's Depend, it depends on you, how you would like your um, artwork to look. The only thing that I would like to warn you all is about over blending. So when you're over blending your work, I've seen a lot of, um, especially beginning artists, they over blend the work so much that the colors, they lose their um, sparkle. So pastel, if you look at it, it's pigment, it's crystals of pigment. And when you're blending it mechanically too much, it loses that um, sparkliness to it. So it does, doesn't have anything to do with mixing the colors, even if you're mixing the colors right, but you still over mix them. They lose that lively color to them. So um, try on the paper, just take a paper and try putting a layer of pastel and mix it just once and then try mixing it long, like on the same sheet of paper next put another, um, the same pastel on the paper and try rubbing it with your finger. And then especially you take it to the sunlight and you will see that kind of shimmery sparkle that pastel has in the one that you overblend. 
it disappears. So that's just my observation that I saw. <laughs> but anyway, um, in this work, I just, yeah, I wanted to show you how to draw water with different colors. I hope that you find it useful. And I will definitely do another tutorial with voiceover for sunsets, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, here, I don't know what else to say, to be honest, because you can see everything in the video. I also wanted to say thank you for everyone who watched my lives yesterday. So it was kind of a bit uh, like nervous to actually be um, talking to people live, but it's just a bit, um, sometimes it gets a bit lonely when you're kind of sitting and talking to yourself, creating the tutorials. So, so occasionally I think I'm gonna do the lives, but I really don't like how it, um, creates that very bright picture. Um, so for the tutorial, I'm sorry for that very bright color. So the colors that I had on paper are, were a lot darker. And yeah, I will let you finish the time lapse and I hope you enjoyed this one. Oh, another thing that I wanted to say is about the boat. So um, I'm creating those kind of the mast, the main mast that I'm doing it's very solid, but the rest of those um, kind of um, ropes and things happening, if you notice, I am kind of putting only the beginning and the ending of that rope, and in the middle, I'm kind of letting it fade. So your brain is wired in a way that it's going to still suggest that there is that rope there. So anyway, this is the tutorial, um, the time lapse, and I will see you in the future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.